Hi, this is Andy of Andy's Personal Development and we are currently live in the breakout room. So, welcome and welcome and we love being here for you with quality and value to inspire and to transform. Remember, we are on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon and iTunes. Today, as usual, we have a special guest to share with you for your development and growth and to live your better informed life. So, grab a cup, pull up a seat and stay tuned for the introduction right here. Hey guys, welcome to Andy's Personal Development Season 2, 2022. And our special guest in the breakout room is Mary Kay Savarese. Mary Kay is an author and speaker. She has written a novel entitled Tigers Love Bubble Baths and Obsession Perfume. Who knew? A summer reading must. Available at Amazon. The M stands for Mary, of course. Mary has won awards. She continues writing with flair and panache and always with an engaging personality. So let's welcome her on our first episode of Season 2 for 2022 in the breakout room on Andy's personal development. Mary K. Savarese. Hey folks, welcome, welcome. This is Andy of Andy's personal development. Season 2. And we are live in the breakout room with Mary Kay Savarese, our special guest, who's going to start off this new year in 2022. We had a slight delay in starting our season because of COVID-19, but thank God he has brought us out true, stronger and better. And we know that we will continue to provide for you the information that is necessary for your growth and development and to add value to your lives. So we thank you for being committed and remaining faithful. And now let's introduce without further ado, our special guest, season two, 2022, Mary Kay Savarese. Hi, Mary. Hi, Andy. Hello, everyone. What a thrill and pleasure to be with you here today. <laughs> it is indeed a pleasure. And we thank you so much for taking the time to join us on Andy's personal development for our first episode of season two, 2022. How does it feel for you? Feels wonderful, exhilarating. <laughs> Great, that sounds good. Mary, we're gonna have a wonderful conversation this afternoon and we're gonna really share some wonderful stuff with our people. And you know, the first thing that I'd really like to know and I'm very curious is, you grew up in Brooklyn, New York, is that right? That is absolutely correct, yes. All right, great. So for some people, it's age eight. For some people, it's age nine, 10, 11, 12. But for you, if you can remember as far back as you can, what it was like growing up as a young lady in Brooklyn, New York, what would that experience be like for you? Can you recall any time at all while you were growing up and how was it tremendously in setting the foundation for your life that you now live? Yes, I can't. Boy, sometimes it seems like it was yesterday. Although I left Brooklyn, New York, goodness, um, in 1984. Right. And it was a different world back then. In many ways, it's the same, but in many ways, it's changed. And I, Brooklyn and the other boroughs of New York City have um, their boroughs, and these boroughs are comprised of neighborhoods. So in Brooklyn, very much nowadays, you hear about neighborhoods, Williamsburg, I grew and Greenpoint. You hear it in TV shows now. Yeah. It's become yeah. so popular for our millennials. They mm -hmm. just love Brooklyn and it is a wonderful place. It is, but it was different back then. We weren't sophisticated. <laughs> we weren't in the, like the now, the wonderful place to live. I grew up in a Polish neighborhood. I speak Polish. Okay. I grew, I grew up with, um, 
um, the streets and the smells of um, just all the wonderful ethnic foods and everything and diversity. It was absolutely wonderful. Why did I leave? <laughs> Not on purpose. My Our jobs took us to different places. But I always remember Brooklyn and the funny and the one, most wonderful thing now is my oldest daughter lives in Brooklyn and she just goes back to all the haunts that I, okay. that I visited. All right. So what was family like for you? And, and did you grow up in a large family? You said uh, that it was a sort of Polish neighborhood and you can speak Polish. That's interesting. But family life, what was it like for you back then? Um, if I can go back, my parents were much older. And the reason for that is um, I grew up in a Catholic Christian household. Mm -hmm. And both my parents my, were immigrants. My mother was actually a U.S. citizen. This goes back to World War II. She was born in the United States, but she was taken back to the Ukraine. And they were taken by the Germans and placed into labor camps as wow. Christians, not as Jews. Mm -hmm. They had to work for the German cause. So when the war was over, they were alive. Uh, my mother was able to come back into the United States, although my father was able to follow her. They were married in the refugee camp. But what wow. happened was she was so ill from mm -hmm. that, that journey that took place for her. She was not able to have children for about 12 to 13 years. So now this is wow. a woman, a, Europe, a, a US citizen, a woman who back then, um, I don't wanna give away my age, but back <laughs> then for a woman in her forties to have two children, one after the other, she did a lot of praying Andy. And that's why I'm named Mary because she, she prayed to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And oh. finally, after about 15 years, she had myself and my brother. So I grew up, um, I have wonderful memories of growing up. I grew up in a lower, um, like lower income family, but I felt like I always had everything. I had the food, I had the clothes, I went to the Catholic schools and um, I was surrounded by people that called themselves family and they were more okay. friends, my parents' friends. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. That song's very heartwarming. There's a lot of history and a, a lot, lot of love in that family growing up, you and your brother. Um, then you went on to do an accounting degree. Yes. Um, but eventually you turned out to be an author and a speaker. Yes. What encouraged you? What was the catalyst behind you pursuing this accounting degree? How did that happen? Well, um, I did, I worked in accounting uh, and I raised a family and okay. always uh, pu I put things on the back burner and those things were my dreams. Just as many women do, we put our families, we put our husbands first. So finally, when um, the children started to leave the roost, mm -hmm. I said, um, you know what? I've got this dream and let me try to pursue it. So Andy, I am an overnight success, a 10 year overnight success intriguing i had to deal i began to write and i wrote one manuscript after another but it was rejection after rejection and you have to grow a thick skin as everybody knows but it was yeah. such a passion of mine that at the time, I think one of the reasons you and I connected for personal development, I was going through a very, very difficult time with okay. um, the children. I mean, well, they're, you know, they're adults now, they're leaving. I had to come to terms with my family unit. And I don't mean to shock anybody, my family unit, as I knew it was dead. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by dead is, the babies that I raised, the toddlers I chased after, the teenagers that we stay up all night waiting for them to come home from their yeah. parties. Yeah. Those were gone. 
And hmm. I had to come to terms with that. And so I was dealing with a lot of anxiety. And thank God I had my passion for writing. So I just kept writing. And I love to write in fantasy be, and mystery because life is too real, <laughs> as we know. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> wow. Now, it says here, and, and I'm going to read something because it's very important, the reviews that you got. It says, Savarese's novel is an inventive and original portal fantasy that avoids the genre's most overused cliches. That's very important. At moments, the story evokes Doctor Who and a wrinkle in time through the plot, though the plot is unlike anything the reader is likely to have read. Savarese piles upon incident upon incident and readers who enjoy a quirky science fiction story with magic and a hint of romance will find much to entertain and that is the u.s review of books how does that make you feel to know that you have been able to draw that kind of criticism positively though out of the U.S. Review of Books. How does it feel? Andy, I count my blessings and I'm very humbled and it pushes me forward. I'm an author, as um, you'll learn if you follow me. I love to write with quirky titles. If I can throw these out, the first book that took me over 10 years, I am a traditionally published author. I'm not, that was my goal. I'm not okay. self-published, but there's nothing wrong with self-publishing. It's come a long way in the last several years. Yeah. 10 years ago, it wasn't as that open to us authors or we were stymied from going mm -hmm. in that route. But right. the title... Um, my first novel is titled, titled, are you ready? Tigers yeah. Love Bubble Bats and Obsession Perfume. Who knew? Wow. What does that mean? <laughs> well, it, it is a murder. Um, it's a murder mystery romance mm -hmm. intertwined with the spiritual, a supernatural twist. So I take you on a journey. Mm -hmm. And um, if you love murders, I give you one after the other. And I take you through that. And it actually comes from now, what inspired me? I visited um, a reserve in St. Augustine, Florida several years ago. Right. And the last part of the tour were, um, it, it's like an old folks home for big cats. So the last part of the tour had a tiger. And I stood there and I watched this incredible 600 pound Siberian tiger walk across the plank, look as though he's taking off his robe. He jumps into this 15 foot um, steel vat of bubbles, overflowing with bubbles. And the wildlife caretaker sprays obsession perfume on his tongue. And Andy, oh. I looked at this with my mouth open and I said, that is the title for my next manuscript my okay. novel tigers okay. love bubble bats and obsession perfume who knew <laughs> <laughs> intriguing mary thanks for sharing that's wonderful we want to continue with your writing and you have a fantasy adventure trilogy with yes. romance for high school fans and older entitled the girl in the toil wallpaper what is the inspiration behind this one Oh, I love it. The girl in the toilet wallpaper. I, when, mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm interviewed, they'll throw it at me and they'll say, did you mean the girl in the toilet, toilet? wallpaper? <laughs> I and I that. say no. Now, Twal. Twal right. is something that is so much a part of our lives. You okay. see it in wall coverings. I'm going to hold something up for the audience. You see it in wall coverings. Right. You see it in um, um, wardrobe. You see it in accent items. And in my home, I loved this toile wallpaper so much. I had so much of it. And I would walk by and I saw in this toile wallpaper, I saw romance. I saw mm -hmm. intrigue. Mm -hmm. I saw just stories and a fantasy and a journey to take my readers on. And so another quirky title, The Girl in the Toile Wallpaper. And wow. as you said, it's a fantasy adventure 
in, it's a trilogy. So this is the first of first, three books. Right, right. And it's intertwined with not just one romance, but several romances, because we love to just bring in that you have to have romance. That's in right. novels, no matter what you read. Like I love to read political thrillers. I can't write them, but there always is a little bit of romance somewhere. So yeah, it's good we for the heart. <laughs> yeah, of course we need some romance for the cardia. <laughs> That's so wonderful. That's really, really refreshing and exciting. But um, you said it's a trilogy. Uh, uh, do you have any information on when part two and three is going to come? Is it in the works and uh, oh, the timing is we looking at? I'm making the announcement with you today. I'm beginning with the editor right after my interview with you. We are beginning the editing on the second book in the trilogy um, because the trilogy is titled The Star Writers Trilogy. The second oh. book in the trilogy um, is going to be titled, but that can change, um, The Star Writers Club. Okay. And then once we get through this, that this book will be published um, probably in the fall, then we begin um, editing the third, which will be more of a continuation of the characters in The Girl in the Twelve Wallpaper. Wonderful. That sounds good. Something to look forward to yeah. and exciting indeed. What is your biggest why, Mary? And, and when I say biggest why, there is something that gets us up in the morning and keeps us going throughout the day. And no matter what happens, we tend to focus on that one thing that helps us get through our days and stuff. Yeah. What is the big why for you, Mary? The big why is the creativity part. Mm -hmm. um, I love to wake up in the morning and that's probably when my, I have my best brain working power there. And um, I just love to create um, the story. And um, I work on that. And then in the afternoon, I work on my marketing. But you have to every day just continue. And um, it is a passion. So it helps me through any other issues I may be dealing with at the time. But um, for me, it's just that wonderful world to get into this creativity of fantasy. Okay. Uh, I want to go back to a bit where you were speaking about something. And I just want to read a little bit from what you sure. were saying. You said you had to come to terms with your family unit as you knew it. It was dead. Yeah. And what you mean is that the babies that you had raised, the toddlers that you had nurtured, the teenagers that you had stayed up for waiting the wee hours of the night were gone. Yeah. What impact did that personally have on your life? And what are the lessons that you would have learned out of that experience? Yes. Something I want to share with all women, because we all we go through these stages and so it hits us at different times in our lives. Mm -hmm. So I think when my youngest was just about ready to graduate from college, what I did not realize, and it did take me time to get through it. I went into therapy. I was dealing with this anxiety that I had no idea where it was coming from because I never felt that before, where my legs would get numb and I just did not feel like myself. And so, um, of course, the doctors want to prescribe medication. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to share that with the audience. I did go on medication for anxiety. But one of the most wonderful things was to get help with a therapist. Right. And I was able to, which doesn't happen overnight, but you have to figure out what is bothering you. Mm -hmm. And it's like within that subconscious level. And as you read, I had to come to terms with that family unit um, being changed, being dead from what I was used to. And once I was able to go through that therapy and work with it and figure things out, I was able to get past the anxiety medication. Not that, I mean, there are times I say to myself, gosh, I should go back on it because <laughs> everything we're wow. dealing with every yeah. day yeah. 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 is anxiety provoking. Yeah. 
but you learn the tools of how to deal with things, how to prioritize. And for women, we raise our babies and um, it's hard, I think, for us women. And one of the other things I want to mention is we tend to keep it inside right. because, Andy, we feel we're so strong. We take care of the family. We have a job. We do this. We volunteer. We do this. And um, so we say, oh, my God, I'm going to seem so weak if I share with anybody. But by all means, I've learned to share and ask for help and to get help. And now I can say I'm on the other side of it. And I thank God every day that I've gotten the tools and I was able to work through it. But it's not that it goes away. You just have the tools to work with it. And that's where my writing helps me because one of the things you learn is if you have a hobby of some kind and you take your mind off of yourself and you are just focused on this thing you love, your hobby, boy, um, you're not dwelling on yourself. And all of a sudden things can work itself out and it helps right. you to deal with that anxiety because your mind is focused on what you love. Great. Thanks for sharing. That was awesomely inspiring, Mary. Um, I get the feeling that you have a great desire for creativity. And it is one of the things that keeps you going every day. If you're looking back in retrospect on the experiences that you have had, would you change anything at all based on what you know now <laughs> that you have come thus far? Would you have done anything different? Knowing me, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> um, we all know it's a journey. Yeah. And everybody has a purpose in life. So right. this journey will take you a certain way. So, um, yeah, I've learned a lot. I've loved a lot going through this process. And um, I'm very grateful to continue um, with it. So um, I'm looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Uh, is there any one individual that you would accredit to being like a mentor in your life, someone who you would have turned to in difficult times and who would keep you focused, laser-like focus on the things that you needed to do? Is there that one person in your life that mentored you through some of your difficult times? I think one of the things is my family was always there for me. And Andy, I'm going to wow. share something with you. Um, while I was writing, and as I said, a ten, uh, over 10 years, it mm -hmm. took me to finally become published. Right. I did not let anybody except for my children. My husband knew that I was writing these manuscripts and dealing with these rejections. And the reason I didn't tell my family and friends is they would have said to me, how many years? 10 years? You're obviously not very good if yeah. it's taken you this long yes, to become yes. published. <laughs> so when I finally told everybody I have a book contract, they looked at me like, what? I didn't even think you read books. Mm. Now you're writing books. <laughs> but I would say my family helped me in the sense of um, the responsibility of pursuing your dreams. Mm -hmm. Now it was my turn. But then I have to um, say a mentor is the editor that I worked with and okay. I continue to work with. Boy, she taught me so much. And I would, um, in terms of becoming an author, I give the credit to um, my editor, Lynn Moon. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Mary, there are so many things that are happening in the world today. And I just want to touch briefly on something that we shared earlier before we actually began the show. Mm -hmm. And it's concerning the pandemic. I don't know how it affected you and your family life and the things that you are accustomed to doing. Uh, everybody has to sort of graduate, I should mm -hmm. say, to a new norm or adjust as the case might be. But what was it like for you? What was the experience like? And, and if you had any advice to give to anyone, what would it be as, as something that you would have learned from the experience? I think as everybody else, when we were first hit with this pandemic, we were shut down. We didn't go anywhere. Okay. Um, if we if we went outside, we wore masks. <laughs> we would take, if you thought you were going to a restaurant, um, 
No, we, we picked up, you know, takeout. But what did I learn? We became more um, family oriented. Mm-hmm. We appreciated more of what we had. And um, yeah, I looked, you know, I did go out. We did get our shots. And I'm hoping that, you know, that helps. I mean, okay. we did come down with it, but thank God we weren't, we didn't have to be hospitalized. Right. But it's it's always a learning curve. We're still learning, right, yes. Andy? Yes. I mean, yes. we're getting all these variants and we're, you know, hopefully the shots, the boosters, they'll help. They're not an end, you know, be it all, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Um, we have things in the world that we consider as we consider as pet peeves. Yeah. You know, and, and I usually like to ask people if there's one or two things in the world that concerns you that you would really love to change or have an impact upon, what yes. would it be for you, Mary? Yeah. There's one thing that I want to stress to your audience. Um, if you have a dream. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Right. The world is going to tell you you're no good. You can't do it. Mm-hmm. If you have this dream and you have this passion in your heart, you go for it. You right. don't let anybody tell you no. You stick with it. Now, I can promise you, it took me so many years. It, I can promise you it'll happen to you if it's your passion and you stick with it. I cannot promise you it'll happen overnight. But those are one of the things. Sometimes people will don't listen to the other people. There are people that just want to put you down. But if you have that love of something, go for it. And I think that's one of the things that bothers me the most is mm. young people, older people, never give up on yourself. I mean, right. I'm older um, <laughs> uh, and I'm creating a whole new life for myself after my children. This is right. a hobby that has become a career for me mm-hmm. and it's all stepping stones. So stick with it. Don't, don't give up your day job necessarily, but, um, but stick with it. It'll happen for you. Right. Uh, and, and that's inspiring. People need to hear things like that more than anything else in the world today people need to know that hey you know what if i stick to it long enough if i just keep trying if i follow yeah. mary's example and her story 10 years she took <laughs> well, the it, can you it imagine could, that <laughs> it can happen sooner for other people that exactly. was that was my journey right right and, and, and one of the most wonderful things, Andy, mm-hmm. is going through this journey. The wonderful people I've met, just as right. yourself, and right. so it, it, it that's that's all incredible. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, looking at what's happening in the world today, can you recall any one time where someone would have told you, "Hey, Mary, I listened to a program, I saw an interview with you." I read something in your book and it really changed my life. It made a tremendous impact. There was value. I mean, the volume in my life went up as a result. Thank you, Mary. Can you remember such a moment or any time that you would have had that experience? I do. And, and you know, Andy, I am, I write fiction. So um, maybe that can come more for somebody who writes nonfiction and a okay. how-to book. But I will tell you, I've had many people that have come back to me and say, I love your story. I was able to get into it. It relaxed me and it brought me to a different place. So those are the inspirations that keep me motivated. The fact that they loved it and they say, when's your next book coming out? (laughs) Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. So tell me something, Mary, you have had the opportunity to make tremendous impact. Uh, on people's life in a positive way. But what do you see for yourself, for Mary, for the future going forward? Are there any specific goals you want to accomplish? Anybody's life you want to impact more, you want to in touch, you want to add value to? What do you see going forward for you? Yep. As I said, I believe we all have a purpose in life and Mm -hmm. we're we're each given different gifts. Nobody is the same. So I 
look, I am looking forward to doing more creating. I'm, um, I want to partner up with um, some organizations in Florida. There is an Adopt-A-Cat Foundation wow. and um, I want to work with them. They want to um, have cats adopted and it'll be a joint thing. I'll be giving away free books. So I want to continue inspiring people to be their best person and I want to keep creating and I do want to work with organizations and speak with women that go through the difficulties that many of us mm -hmm. go through in raising mm -hmm. a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds wonderful. And I'm glad that you were so clear and concise about it because it means that you have something planned that you're actually looking forward to. Thank you so much for sharing. We're going to take a quick break. We have in the breakout room on Andy's personal development, Mary Kay Savaris, author and speaker. So stand by. We're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, we are live and back in the breakout room. Our special guest, Mary Kay Savaris. <laughs> uh, Mary, um, we have spent very quality time together with each other. Uh, it has been yeah. wonderful. Yes, indeed. Wonderful just Same speaking here. with you. Um, there is two things that I really want to clear up in my mind. The Star Writers Club. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a bit about that? That will be the second book in my trilogy. And today I am beginning editing with my editor. Right. So that the second book in the trilogy um, at this point is looking to be published um, by Indigner House um, late fall. Okay. My my first book in the trilogy, The Girl in the Twelve Wallpaper, I love to write with quirky titles. If you love fantasy, if you love adventure, if you love romance, my book is um, at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. It is in any independent bookstore, which we love to send people to to help them nowadays, because as we know, many independent bookstores are struggling nowadays. Yeah. And um, no, but I, um, yes, I, that is the second book. And the third book will be, is currently in the works. I'm writing the manuscript now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks for sharing. Um, what is the two minute author and what inspired it? And, and, and what did you hope to achieve by 
bringing that on as a program? I believe it's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. YouTube. But, oh, right. yes, you do a lot of investigative work, Andy. You're, <laughs> you're amazing. It's now, part of I, what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I thought? Two minutes. Um, uh -huh. You can grab somebody's attention for two minutes. Yeah. So I started to speak in terms of um, people's like if you're looking to become a writer in the, um, within those two minutes, I mm -hmm. did like a year's worth or 12, 12 segments worth where I talked about the editing process, um, believing in yourself and things like that. But I figured for two minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll have your interest. After that, okay. you lose people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, um, as as a public speaker, we have been told on many occasions, listen, if you didn't get their attention, if they didn't connect with you in the first two or three minutes, yes, boy, you got to work twice as hard, sometimes three times as hard just to get that energy connection back between you and the crowd. So I understand what you're saying. Um, looking forward, Mary there are so many people that are really struggling uh, in the world today. And I've, I've had the, the privilege and sometimes the misfortune of dealing with some of them and having to advise them and give them counsel and guidance and so on. But if there's anything that you can say to the people in the world that need to understand how they can live a better life, how they can achieve happiness, mm -hmm. prosperity, and good health, what would you say to them? What would be your strongest message to the world? Mm, I feel like crying right now. Oh, I my. Would say, I would say you're worth it. You're okay. worth it. Okay. And um, you need help. Um, have faith in God mm -hmm. and try to get help. And if you have faith in the Lord, um, I think they can help you through. God can help you through many things. You have to sometimes you know, have that faith in yourself. And if you tell yourself you're worth it, then um, that's a starting point. And try yeah. to get help for mm -hmm. your the issues. Everybody deals with issues. Nobody, Andy, as we know, has the perfect life. That's right. That's true. Yeah. Um, I've often wondered that people need to understand how to create a balance, you know, um, your social life, especially with your family. If that's going good, that's a plus. And if you're emotionally balanced, that's even better. But your spiritual life, I mean, everything basically hinges on that. And sometimes people neglect that. But you, you are expressing something so deeply inspirational from a spiritual point of view. Uh, is it something that you have personally experienced for yourself? Um, yes, very much. I mean, I was raised in a Catholic household. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, if you're Catholic, you find you come and go constantly right. within your faith. Right. And 15 years ago, and I mean, I, I taught uh, my children um, through the religious classes. and But one of the things that I found so rewarding spiritually for me, I would say about 12 years ago, I became a Eucharistic minister now okay. uh, for the Catholic Church. Now, a Eucharistic mm -hmm. minister assists the priest in handing out communion to um, the churchgoers. But one of the things that I loved the most was I was able to bring the Holy Communion to people. And I went to nursing homes. Oh, and okay. I brought the, that was so incredible to be able to do that. And I think my faith grew deeper from that aspect of um, the church. For me, wow, wow, just connecting with people that way that changed my life quite a bit. Wonderful, okay, Mary. We're coming to the end of our wonderful interview and our uh warm conversation, and I just want to let the audience know that on Thursday, 27th of January at 3 p.m. Eastern, there'll be 4 p.m. AST. Our next guest on. And his personal development in the breakout room will be Pastor Bill Jenkins. He's a senior pastor of Destiny Land Christian Center and an award-winning author. So please look out for him mm -hmm. on Thursday, 27th of January, 
3 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. AST time. He will be our guest right here live in the breakout room. So, Mary. Yes. You are the person of focus right now. You are the one that we are looking forward to for inspiration, for advice. If people need to get in contact with you, yes. what are your handles? How they can reach out to you, get your books and stuff? Oh. How can they reach out to you? Oh, please visit my author website, which mm -hmm. is com. Mary Kay Savarese. I'm going to take you on a journey through my author website. There you have my books. You have my trailers. You can connect with me um, if you want to. Um, and um, please, um, you can get my books through, um, through the website, which will lead you to Amazon, or as I said, Barnes and Nobles, any independent bookstore, um, Tigers Love Bubble Bats and Obsession Perfume. Who knew? If you love mystery romances with a supernatural spiritual twist, if you love fantasy adventure and romance, please check out The Girl in the Twelve Wallpaper. It's the first of a trilogy. And if you have a, um, a book group and you read my book, nowadays with um, Zoom and Skype and everything else, I can connect with you and your book group. And that would wow. be an honor for me. Wow. So we could share Prosecco, right? <laughs> that way. Uh, amazing. Sounds good. What about your blog, Mary? Um, my blog, I will continue with that. You will see um, in this new year, I'm developing more things with the blog. Okay, great. Wonderful. We have had the pleasure of having Mary Kay Savarese live in the breakout room on Andy's Personal Development, the first show episode for 2022, season two. She has been refreshing, inspiring, and motivating. We thank you so much, Mary, for spending time with us. Quality time indeed. And we thank our people who are on the outside for continuing to listen and support Andy's personal development as you see growth, health, and prosperity. Yeah. We are here for you to provide you with that information. Anything you want to say before we wrap up, Mary? As I said, I want everybody to know that they are worth it and to mm -hmm. pursue your dream don't let anybody stop you. Cover your ears yeah. and go for it. Yeah, wonderful. On that note, we can say that this episode has come to an end. Stick around, Mary. We'll talk to you shortly. We're just going to end the broadcast and thank all the people. Yes, much love and respect from the heart, yeah, from us from heart. to you. Wonderful. Thank you. Until next time, this is Andy saying, see you on Andy's Personal Development. Bye for now.